All right, today we're going to talk about mass pores in concrete. Ooh. So thermal cracking is one of the large things that uh, is about mass pores. So we pour these large dams, these large foundations that have this tremendous amount of concrete. And because of that, we get we can get some cracking. And so one of the types of cracking we can get is, is this thing called thermal cracking. And really, this is a large focus um, about the differential change. So maybe between the middle of the concrete and the edge of the concrete where the form works at, you will actually have, um, if it gets above for, you know, 35, 40 degrees Fahrenheit difference, a lot of times you may start seeing some thermal cracking. This differential, so the difference between the middle of, of that concrete and the very end corner. So um, that can cause that difference if it gets above 40 degrees F, a good rule of thumb is, you know, you really wanna be below 35 degrees Fahrenheit. And so that's the maximum temperature that, um, that, that they kind of allow. So when ACI, the Committee on Mass Pours. So, um, another type of cracking that, that's really prevalent in mass pores is delayed etronite formation. So this is kind of a weird, you know, it's also called DET. This is kind of a weird little cracking mechanism where um, it actually, if you get above about 158, 160, I've seen some literature at even 162. And if you get above, you know, a certain limit, um, you're going to start getting cracking. So um, you got to be real careful to make sure that the maximum temperature inside the middle of that concrete does not get too high. Because once it gets too high, that, that the cement, the C3A in the cement will stop reacting. It'll actually delay. So maybe a year or two, late, two years later, then all of a sudden that C3A starts reacting and it can cause excessive expansion and, and cracking because the those hydration products that the C3A is producing, you know, um, which is you know largely etronite, um, it will actually start cracking because there's no room for the etronite to go. So um, so you don't want you know this delayed etronite to occur. So you got to be real careful, and especially in the precast facility industry where you're trying to get the beams off the, uh, the line as quick as possible. Um, you really don't want to accelerate the heat of that concrete any more than 100, you know, 158 degrees Fahrenheit. So, um, so like I said before, based on ACI 301, uh, they have where the max temperature of that core for anything, needs to be about 158 degrees F. Um, and then anything between the middle of that to the uh, outer edge is the change cannot be any more than about 35 degrees F. Some say 38, some say 40, but ACI 301 um, uh, refers to, uh, or specifies 35 degrees Fahrenheit. So. I think both of those are pretty good. So that's both of those different numbers right there. And so um, just kind of be aware. So when we talk about mass pores and we're trying to design concrete so that it doesn't have thermal cracking, it doesn't have delayed etronite formation. And so, you know, both of those types of cracking, cracking is not good. So that's what we're trying to do here. Um, so again, I'm just kind of showing you, you know, maybe it's like a, a large foundation um, you can think of it, and maybe there's formwork all the way around the outer edge, but in essence, um, you can put temperature sensors in the middle of the concrete, you can put it at different places, you can put it on the edge, and you can um, log over time. So you can have thermocouple, maybe a sensor in the middle that, that measures the temperature, um, some type of thermometer type of device. There's lots and lots and lots of different uh, temperature devices out there that are really cool. Some are, you know, as small as a little uh, um, poker chip. And uh, some are actually have wires that you can just um, plug in there. 
in one spot and you can have a little data logger. And so whether it's the little poker chip or, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe some wires or, or, or maybe another technology, cause there's other stuff too um, that you can use, whichever, whichever method, whichever technology you're using, typically it's going to bring back to some type of um, device that can store these temperatures over time. And so it's really cool. Some of the maturity stuff can, can also do this too. Um, so it's really cool um, to kind of to kind of see a lot of a lot of this new technology that keeps coming out over and over and over again um, that, that makes it easier and easier to um, really uh, monitor your, your concrete, especially with the temperature, whether it's maturity type stuff or, or things that are a little bit more focused on the mass pour. Um, and so, but again, you want to have sensors typically in the place that's going to be the that's going to be theoretically the hottest. So usually the middle of the, of the concrete, and then you're going to find the coolest spot possible. So um, typically if it's, you know, being exposed to the environment, um, maybe right, right on the edge of the formwork, something like that, um, that may be the coolest spot possible. So those are kind of where people would like to, a lot of times like put the sensors and then they're going to actually measure. So what we have here is we actually have two different sensors. We have one sensor that is in the middle of the concrete. That's, that's this top line right here. They'll actually measure the maximum temperature. And then we have this other line, which is the, the parameter. So the very edge of that concrete was supposed to be the good quote unquote cool, coolest at. Um, you know, maybe where the, where the form work is. And so, um, and they measure that. So in essence, the sensor for the temperature curve, we have our Tmax or our temp maximum temperature here, and then we have our differential. So we check the in between these lines over time and we find the biggest difference. So typically you're going to uh, normally within 36 and, um, 120 hours is typically we're going to find a lot of your peaks for a lot of this concrete. Again, this is just typical. I'm not saying it's, you know, for every application, because obviously if you have, uh, you know, if you're using uh, an accelerator, it may be quicker. If you're using a retarder, maybe a little bit farther, you know, maybe your, your hours are going to change. If you're using a lot of uh, secondary cementitious materials, that may not react until uh, a later age, stuff like that. Um, there's going to be some, you know, some things that can affect um, when it when you're going to see the largest differential, the largest temperature change. So this is kind of just you know basic theory right here of the temperature curve. So again, this just kind of helps kind of communicate um, the middle T max. And then, you know, the middle compared to the edge. Um, so this, this little arrow should be a little bit over here where the, where the, where the change in the temperature is at. So sorry, um, should have been extended a little bit farther. All right. So how do you recognize if you're going to have a mass pour? You know, Dr. Cook, how do, you, how do you know that? How do you know when this is going to happen and when it's not going to happen? That's a great question. Historically, Anytime you're going to have large placements where the minimum cross-sectional dimension is at least three foot. So um, a lot of foundations, they may be obviously length times height, uh, maybe, um, you know, they may have a width of, you know, if they have a width of like three foot or four foot um, wide, and then they're obviously four or five foot um, high and then, you know, hundreds of feet long, you know, more, you know, um, that's pretty common to, 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 to do a mass pour on that. Or if you think about a dam who, you know, uh, a lot of dams can be very, very, very thick, um, three, five, six, um, you know, 30 feet. I mean, we're, we're, you know, 60 feet. I mean, it just depends on how thick what the dam is, but uh, I've seen some where they're real small, like I just mentioned, I've seen some that are a lot larger. But um, no, no matter how thick it is, usually if it's over, you know, that thickness, um, even floor slabs, um, you know, that are that are huge, 
and the length and the and the and the width, but that thickness, that thickness, you know, when it gets above, especially you know, two and a half, three foot thick, um, you're going to start seeing some mass pour um, that's going to play a little bit more into it. So you start want to look at that. So typically, anything that looks like it's it's a huge mass of concrete, you know, so I mean, that's just a good rule of thumb is about three feet for the minimum dimension. So sometimes even, like I said, even uh, with a minimum of three, uh, minimum of dimension less than three feet, the temperature can still exceed the mass pour limit. So when in doubt, you know, run the models to check. So, you know, we, we pull out the computer models and that's actually how we do most mass pour type um, checks. And these, you know, these checks are actually pretty basic once you understand some of the uh, equations. Um, some can get really complex whenever you start looking at the cement chemistry and the, um, the amount of heat, the amount of energy that's being produced with the cement and the uh, other cementitious materials, maybe the admixtures and stuff like that, how they all interact together. And there's lots of cool programs. One cool program out there is actually called Concrete Works. Um, Texas DOT, uh, I believe, funded the project. And so there are some, uh, there are some um, people at the University of Texas at Austin that develop the work. They do a lot of consulting work now. And they're typically some of the, uh, what, what people refer to as some of the experts in that industry, in the concrete industry at Mass Pour. Um, you also have uh, um, other, other programs that can be out there too. So I think Concrete Works is a free program. Um, I, you know, it's really cool how you can just plug in your cement and your SCM oxide. So, you know, the amount of calcium, the amount of silica, et cetera, um, that you have in there, the luminate. You can plug all those things in, and then from there, they'll actually generate heat curves. So, it, and it's, you know, it's a model, so it's not perfect, but it's pretty interesting. So, that's actually, whenever I went into Concrete Works, I plugged in, and they gave me a maximum temperature. So, this line way up here um, for just a mix. And then the minimum temperature that they're going to assume in the section um, you know, maybe um, down down here. So they'll have uh, then they have the ambient temperature that you've assumed, and then they have the maximum difference of that section. Um, so they'll have everything. You know, everything's kind of plotted, and that's just how they do their do do this in concrete works. So um, so it's really cool free program. So the goal is, like I said before, when you design a mass pores, you want to keep the outside warm. You want to keep the uh, the core cool. So you know how do you do that? Well, if you think about, um, in essence, you know keep the the core, the middle of that concrete cool. You're going to think about things that you're going to apply in hot weather concrete to keep it warm. There's things you're going to apply for cold weather concrete. So when you're combating high temperatures, so whenever the maximum's really high, you want to reduce, the goal is you want to reduce the initial temperature. So obviously you can't always control the outside temperature. You can't always pour in the winter months or, you know, in early spring or early fall. Sometimes, you know, you don't have control. You have to pour in the middle of the summer. But sometimes you can do night pours to kind of help to get that concrete temperature, the initial, um, a lot lower. You can do things like water your aggregate piles, use cold water, use ice. Um, you can use, you know, slag or fly ash. A lot of times you can use, reduce the amount of cement that you actually have in your, in your mix. You can also do things like, uh, install geothermal grids. So in like the Hoover Dam, there's actually these uh, pipes that go through the concrete and the water circulates through these pipes and will help in, in, in the pipes, the concrete around the pipe, it will actually be cooler 
because of this. So it does help quite a bit to make sure that you have nice, cool um, concrete. So it does help reduce the temperatures quite a bit. So we talk about combating high temperature differences. So in between the core and the actual formwork, um, how do you combat that? Well, one of the probably the most basic ways is to keep your formwork on there longer. Add um, heated blankets or plastic, something to keep some of the heat in so that, you know, um, so that it's it's not just releasing all the heat and, and it's going to be a bunch, it's going to be a bunch cooler on the outside. Um, sometimes you need to change your type of formwork too. Um, you know, instead of using steel, you might want to use wood forms or maybe, you know, think about maybe there's some type of insulation that you can use. You can actually add to that formwork. Um, and you look at those R number, R numbers of your different types of formwork and it can kind of help you out or you, you know, sometimes you even buy a little um, insulation and you can actually put it on the actual form, the wooden formwork to, um, to kind of help. Another thing you can do is install, like I said before, a geo grid um, on the outside to, to, to help um, sometimes, you know, increase the temperature of that concrete too. So, um, but there's, you know, or, you know, there's lots of different ways. Um, and like I said before, if you can, sometimes you need to control that middle of that, um, that, that slab temperature. And so you can go in and, and do lots of different stuff to kind of keep that temperature differential um, down. So with that, that's mass pores. I hope you learned something a little bit about mass pores. Have a great day.